Hello and welcome to the shack of Echo India 2 Kilo Charlie EI 2KC. Uh, my name's Anthony. You might have met me on the band as uh, Tony, which is uh, short for Anthony and easier to send in Morse code. I uh, just wanted to give you a brief uh, glimpse at the station first and then maybe talk a little bit about the propagation we've been having and maybe a little bit about the uh, Bureau service here in Ireland. Well, just to start off with a very kind of brief overview of the shack. The main rig here is the FT1000MP, the Yezu. I was on 12 meter CW there listening for Tango X-Ray 7 mic. Marquis S Island in the Pacific, and we'll talk more about the, uh, sounded like there was something still there about the propagation. Um, for 6 meters, I use the ICOM 746, but I also use that for 10 meters. I find it handy, connected to an Antron 99, very, very handy. The main radio is connected to an MA5B mini beam plus uh, inverted Vs for 30 and 40. I have nothing for 80 meters in terms of an antenna just at this minute in time. Hoping to do something with that. Also, for listening, mainly on 80 meters, I have an old ICOM IC735. And down the end of the shack, we have the VHF portion. Uh, this is 2 meters FM, uh, 4 meters FM, and a scanner here for various bands and modes. So that's it. This is the mic, the desk mic for the uh, Yezu. And I also have a Kent uh, key and another homemade key there for the 746. The station here is located about 30 miles north of Dublin in the town of Drogheda. That's Delta Romeo Oscar Golf Hotel Echo Delta Alpha Drogheda. At the gateway to the historic Boyne Valley, where we have the uh, 5,000 year old Stone Age monuments of Newgrange, Nowth, and Douth, which are only about seven or eight miles inland from here. I wanted to talk to you a little bit today about the Bureau Service, uh, the IRTS Bureau Service here in Ireland, and that's the uh, Irish Radio Transmitters Society, which is the umbrella body for the amateur radio community here in Ireland. Our local club uh, here in Louth is Echo India 7 Delta Alpha Romeo, Dundalk Amateur Radio Society, which is 42 years old this year and has its headquarters on Castletown Road in Dundalk. Basically, uh, in ham radio, if you want to confirm a contact with somebody, for instance, if you've made a contact with, um, let's say, for example, an operator in Spain, an Echo Alpha, uh, on maybe 12 meter CW, um, to confirm this contact, you need to have uh, what we call a QSL, which is a confirmation that this contact has taken place. It's a confirmation, um, usually in paper, the old fashioned way is by a QSL card, which is a bit like a postcard, and I'll show you some of those in a moment. More modern methods involve uploading your log to uh, websites such as the ARRL's Logbook of the World, which also counts towards DXCC credit and EQSL, and I'm a fan of both, I actually use both, uh, although obviously I'm a bigger fan of Logbook of the World. It's a very quick and easy way of getting QSL confirmation for any awards that you might be uh, looking for. I also like receiving cards, it might be an old fashioned thing, but it's, uh, it's been the practice in amateur radio for a long time to confirm a QSL. There's an example of my QSL card there. Echo India 2 Kilo Charlie, so you'll see that in the front of the card, my call sign and a nice photo which was also taken by my good self. And on the back then you fill out various information, well there's information about you and your station and your location, but also the date of your contact, the time, the frequency, the RST, which is readability, signal and tone, what mode you were using and whether you require a QSL or not. So that's my card, I send that whether it be direct in the mail or through the QSL service, which I'll speak about in a minute, and then I would expect a reply. When I get a reply, that means that contact that I made has been confirmed. So here's a bunch of QSL cards that I just received yesterday through the IRTS Bureau service. <coughs> now, uh, thankfully, because I'm active on the bands, I've been receiving quite a few um, QSL cards via the Bureau. Now, <clears throat> it has to be said, a lot of these are from European operators, but I'm surprised every time to get some interesting uh, DX uh, um, confirmed by the Bureau service. 
basically how the Bureau of Service works is under normal circumstances, if you want a reply to a QSL card for a contact and you want it fairly quickly, what you do is you fill out your card, you put $2 or an IRC, which is a redeemable coupon, uh, into an envelope, post it to the operator's address or the address for his QSL manager or her QSL manager and wait for a response via direct mail. Generally, this is a good way to do things because you're guaranteed a fairly speedy reply hopefully within two or three weeks maybe, depending on where the uh, DX operator is located. However, this is impractical for operators who are making maybe uh, hundreds of contacts every month, or maybe thousands, depending on how active you are. It's impractical to send out a QSL card for every contact you make. In any case, you might want a QSL card for every contact you make. Um, for instance, certain countries in Europe have lots of operators very active throughout the bands so it's highly probable that within a short space of time on the bands you're going to have for instance Germany, Italy, um, Czech Republic uh, confirmed up and down the bands on all the slots that you need without having to send out direct QSLs. The Bureau Service is like a post office. Um, what they basically do is allow receipt of a number of cards from one operator and then these are then distributed into a, basically like a mini post office sorting office um, and you know when they build up enough cards to go to each DXCC each country they will send those then to the QSL manager or the uh, bureau service in that country um, so I mean within the last six months for instance I probably have sent five or six hundred cards uh, through the Bureau Service and I've received probably the same amount if not more so this is the latest batch of cards to arrive now like I said some European countries you would expect to get a lot of cards from for instance Italy I have a lot of uh, Italians sending me QSLs in this one France um, HB9 Hotel Bravo 9 Switzerland but uh, some of the rarer ones that's uh, Zulu Delta 8 Oscar that's uh, from Ascension Island that's from 2010, November 2010, 15 meters CW, which is Morse code. Um, Madeira, Charlie Tango 9, uh, for a contact on 80 meters in February 2010. Alland Island, now I like that. That's, uh, well, it has been until recently a rare one. Oscar Hotel Zero X ray and Oscar Hotel Zero Bravo for three QSOs on. 160 meters, 80 meters, and 40 meters. Charlie Radio 2 X ray in the Azores, and that's for again 15 meters CW. Uh, this is Jesper in Greenland, Oscar X ray 3 Kilo Quebec for 80 meters SSB and for 40 meters SSB, and then the rest are just quite a hefty bunch of European cards there. So, what I will do then, you know, when I get a chance, is I'll go through my log individually for each call, make sure that the information is correct, that I did in fact work this station at the time and date and band and mode suggested and then uh, confirm it by ticking it off in the log and then filing the cards away for, for uh, later use. But uh, I suppose the reason that the Bureau Service is such good value is uh, it's 30 euros to be a member of IRTS here and as I said Probably this year, within 2011, I will have sent probably the best part of a thousand cards via the QSL uh, Bureau service here in Ireland. Uh, if I were to send those by direct mail, um, for Ireland and Britain, a stamp here I think is 52 cent, and for everywhere else in the world it's 82 cent. So you have the price for a stamp, an envelope, and then if you needed to send the money in order to have your return postage covered and a lot of direct QSLs of course require at least one dollar but usually two dollars or an IRC um, to be sent with them so it's tremendously good value and you get basically the service of a post office a postal service uh, for 30 euros a year which works out at a lot less than a euro a week which is good value for money and if you're active on the bands of course it's going to be uh, very valuable to you so I'd highly recommend anybody who's not a member of IRTS and is not using a, their, the Bureau um, to maybe uh, think about it and uh, you can check all the details on the IRTS QSL service on 
irts.ie, which is the website. And of course, if you're not in Ireland, you know, you can consult your um, uh, your um, governing radio body uh, in the UK. That's the RSGB in the United States, the ARRL. And of course, in other countries, there are uh, different bodies which run run the uh, amateur radio show in those uh, in those uh, various countries. So, um, just a quick word too about the inwards service. The inwards service, what happens is, all the QSLs arrive and are sorted into number. So, basically, there's a different manager for each number. Uh, in my case, because I'm number two. I have a manager who looks after all of the EI2s and then there's a manager for Echo India 3 and for Echo India 4 right up to 9. Uh, and of course zeros and ones as well, although those calls are a little bit more rare because uh, generally zeros and ones are not given out uh, only for special events and contest calls. So most EIs you will hear will be EI2 up to EI9 and you'll hear very few EI zeros and EI ones. Uh, a word about propagation. Uh, sunspot number this week hit 195. Within the last seven days the solar flux index has been at 190. Fantastic conditions on 10 metres uh, as most people will know. I've been working rare DX with 50 watts and an Antron 99 or 50 watts and an MA5B. Uh, maximum 100 watts from the station here. At the beginning of this year I had approximately 35 maybe 38 DXCCs worked on 10 meters, having only been licensed in 2009 when the bands were very, very quiet. And I'm glad to say that my total now is at 100 and I think it's 117 at the moment. So I'm thrilled. And the latest edition is Tango X Ray 7 Mike on uh, 10 meters, and also today Echo 5, which is South Cook Islands in the Pacific. So if you haven't been around, radio lately, I suggest that you go there. Um, if you only have a, uh, a low spec radio with 100 watts and you only have a, an Antron 99 or a vertical or a, maybe even a dipole, uh, that's all you're going to need with the conditions the way they are at the moment. Uh, you'll enjoy it thoroughly. So thanks very much for watching this short broadcast from the station of EI2KC. I hope to do more of these um, in the future, depending on how many people um, uh, watch the YouTube uh, version and of course if you like to keep up to speed with what's happening in this shack and in the wider uh, radio scene here in Ireland you can catch me on hamradioireland.blogspot.com. Until next time, 7-3 from EI2KC. Cheers.